James Flanders grew up in Midwest City, Oklahoma, where he quickly became a standout football player. His raw talent and willingness to work hard set him apart from his peers. James Flanders, the ball carrier, touchdown, Midwest City. James was our running back uh, who carried the ball the majority of the time. I wanted to be a wide receiver, but the coach was like, nah, you can't do that, you have to be a running back. And ever since then, I've been great at what I did. James was a phenomenal athlete. Um, he grew up in a family full of athletes. The dad was a running back. He played running back in college. Was an all-stater, led the state in rushing his senior year. My senior year is like, that's when college, when he started looking at me. So I had to go out there and go get it. <laughs> his, his junior year was good, but his senior year, he just blossomed. You know, just like a big old road just blossomed out there, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Each game, I had like a lot of carries each game, and like a lot of yards. My old line really pushed me through. Well, if it came to crunch time, everybody's looking at him. If he had to make a big run, uh, get the first down, you know, that's what leaders do. They step up in the moments, and he was the kid that would do that. And I, and I pushed him a little bit, a lot. But I said a little bit. <laughs> I started playing football when I was younger. Like, it's called Pee Wee football. When he was small, <laughs> he didn't like to go to practice. So we had to force him to go to practice. And I think he started loving it because he started looking at his brother now. Even though I think I'm better than both of them, <laughs> yeah, they always had a big influence on me. It's a little fun deal, you know, we're all competitive, playing against each other a lot. They, they were very competitive with them growing up. Even at home, they playing their games and stuff. Well, they, they all wanted to win. Yeah, they all wanted to win. <laughs> well, it's just, it is all around fun, but we know that when it comes down to it, we'll give 100% everything we do. My deal was that if you're not going to play, get out of the way. You know, don't waste nobody time. Don't just, just play and play your heart out. And I think just by his actions, just by what he did on the field, pulled a lot of guys in too. He had, he had a very good impact on people's riding because he had an outgoing spirit. He's just so positive and so outgoing that people look up to him. What is he going to do next? Let's see, I always shout him out and uh, talk to him every now and then. I hit him up during high school. He really like coached me up on some things like I didn't learn from my brother or nothing that. So I basically like, he was more like a brother than like a coach to me. Somebody that, you know, beyond football and later on down the road, it's not necessarily a coach player relationship, but it turns into a friendship. While James was playing football at Midwest City High School, the team went 30 and five and undefeated in their district. They made it to the second round of playoffs twice and recorded only one loss two years in a row. He led Class 6A in rushing as a senior with 2,456 yards and was the 18th ranked Oklahoma prospect. Once a bomber, always a bomber. <laughs> you can never forget where you came from. James Flanders in for the touchdown. The process was easy for me because I say my junior year, Going to my senior year, I committed early to Tulsa. It was up to him to make the decision, and we let him make the decision. Do what you want to do. Don't worry about parents or friends or anything like that. You make your decision. College football was a big thing to me because my buds went to college too. You know, he's got a good head on the shoulder, so I think uh, when it came time, I think he knew where he needed to be. And, you know, Tulsa was a fantastic school. I think he fit in well there. The school, you know, it's a private school. And, uh, and plus, my oldest brother went there, so I wanted to play with him. It was pretty cool. It was very cool. He brought a lot of energy to the team when I was there. Even though I was redshirted in practice, I get to go against him. I think I juked him out one time in practice. <laughs> I still got the feel somewhere, but it was, it was cool being with him. James was a guy that was very competitive, had a ton of energy about him, always smiling. James is, James is really a smart guy. Uh, and he played with a lot of passion, played fast, was really physical. When we're on the field, James is a different guy, and uh, his approach to the game and, and what he wanted to do was, was special. Really rare that somebody brought him down that first contact. He was a really physical runner, but he also had good speed. He fought some injuries early, so we really didn't know what we had in James until later on. He had some injuries at some critical times that, that kind of kept him out of competition. I just told him just to, hey, if you can't play, encourage your teammates. <laughs> Stay focused. 
I was just keeping a positive attitude because every time, like during fall camp, I either pulled my hamstring, my hamstring was terrible. Injuries is part of the game, and it happens to the best of, of people. Um, but you gotta stay in there, you know, don't quit. Based all in all, just keep talking with my coaches and teammates, kept a positive attitude. Go down to the game regardless that he wasn't playing or not to support him and his team. To let him know that we were behind him 100% regardless of what. I think he was just waiting on his opportunity to stay healthy and uh, get into the mix and work his way into the starting lineup. And next thing you know, uh, most of the senior season, I ain't like get hurt or nothing like that. It was like minor bruises and all that, but my hamstrings are feeling good. He stayed healthy for pretty much the entire year uh, and it paid off. And his last year at the University of Tulsa, wow, what a excitement that was. He kind of, he set the tone at practice every day by the way he practiced, the way he blocked, the way he ran, the way he finished runs down the field. And I think that was contagious. And other guys saw that and kind of grabbed onto it. That's the great thing about this game of football is everybody's got their part to play and everybody's got to do their job. And, and James was very serious about his, his uh, input into what we did. I think James, just like most guys on the team, grew up playing football and just was naturally competitive. The thing that James really brought was he ran with an attitude about him, uh, very physical, kind of ran extremely angry. During games, he and I would have, would have really good high-level dialogue on what was going on, what we saw from the defense, uh, what he wanted to try. We're an up-tempo, fast-paced type team, and so, you know, as soon as he got tackled or whatever happened, I mean, he's popping up, getting the ball to the officials, he's running stuff down, he's doing this and that. James was a great example of, you don't have to be a rah-rah guy to be a leader. James was, was a leader in his own way, he'd show up and work. You know, I think it's just his his willingness to be a, a true team player. My senior year, just stayed positive and kept faith in God and um, gave me a really like great senior season. And my teammates and coaches pushed me through that too. James did all that stuff, set an NCAA record, um, school and conference leader in single season rushing yards. First seven games he didn't start, but he was still contributing. He still showed up and worked every single day like he was a starter. James got his first start of the 2016 season in the 59-30 win over Memphis. We knew we were going to have to rely on James pretty heavily that game, and James really stepped up to the plate. After that first touchdown, I was like, oh, cool, so this is going to be easy. Early in the game, made some really big runs in there that really got us going, and we were able to establish our running game at a point that uh, Really, we, we took the game out of their hands in a hurry because of his performance, our offensive line, and everything else. That second and third one came, I was like, yeah, we got to keep it rolling because my old line was pushing. It gave us more confidence, and I think it gave him more confidence in himself because we all knew what he could do. He just hadn't had the opportunity to do it. Oh, that gave me like a, a big confidence booster. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm the man now. <laughs> he just needed his opportunity to shine, and when he did, um, took full advantage of it and didn't look back and rushed for over 250 yards, set a, I think, a conference record, five touchdowns in one game. You know, I had that goal in mind, like, I want to be, like, something great, like, remember after I leave college. Probably a pivotal game in his career, kind of set the tone for what James is, who he is, and how he does his job. With the win, Tulsa became bowl eligible and improved their overall record to 6-2. and two. After I graduated, I, I watched his game. When I had my little daughter, we would sit there and watch him play all the time or whatever on TV and stuff. Even watching TV, watching James on TV, you know, I can always I coached him, you know, that's, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> but this senior year, wow. What was <laughs> the whole staff, the quarterback, the receivers, the running back, just to watch them kids play as a unit. They, they, they did the thing. Our approach that year was just, you know, moving the change, trying to be explosive when we could have opportunities to do that. And uh, those guys, the unselfish play of them, uh, really allowed that to happen. I think it had very little to do with my coaching and uh, a lot to do with how those guys showed up and their attitude and their, their work ethic every day. In the final game of the year, Tulsa defeated Central Michigan 55 to 10 in the Miami Beach Bowl. This game marked a historic moment in FBS history when Tulsa became the first team to have a 3,000-yard passer, two 1,000-yard receivers, and two 1,000-yard rushers. James Flanders and his four other teammates are now in the College Football Hall of Fame for this amazing accomplishment. As you look back on it now, I mean, something that's never happened in college football, um, you know, it kind of still gives me chills to, to know that 
that we were able to do that and do it here at the University of Tulsa. I ain't never knew something was like that and I could be a part of something like that. So it was like a wonderful feeling. It was like better than great. When he did, when he did breaking the records and stuff. It was just amazing because they talked about it on the radio. I heard it on the radio. I told him like, hey, uh, they talked about your uh, thing on the radio at one point about what y'all did in Tulsa. Yeah, we broke the final bowl game because uh, Josh, he wasn't getting his yards and stuff. So we was waiting on Josh to get it. Those guys, that's something that can never be taken away from them. You know, they can take their grandkids, their great carrying kids, and even further generations can always go to the College Football Hall of Fame and see what they did there. It's crazy to be like in the Hall of Fame in college, like coming from where I'm from, like Midwest City. Oh yeah, well, yeah, oh, I'm proud. Yeah, and I, I think he got one over with his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> James Flanders had a remarkable senior season, finishing with 1,629 rushing yards and 18 touchdowns. He was ninth in the nation with 125.3 rushing yards per game, and his 18 touchdowns were the seventh most in NCAA for 2016. His graduation from the University of Tulsa was streamed on ESPN while in Miami for the bowl game. What I want to see is, is how the program benefited James. They played a great role. Uh, Coach Montgomery's funny too. <laughs> Just being around him and watching him smile about everything and, and you know having fun on the football field, whether we're at practice or in games, or it didn't matter. He's always gonna find something to smile about, something to laugh about something to crack a joke about, but he was just just a great personality to have in the room. For him, I just want to see him succeed in whatever he decides to do in the future because um, I don't want to look up and, and James not be the person that he wanted to be when he left here. It's all of them been, 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 been blessed with this sport, been blessed overall, and I thank God for that. He and his family, you know, they're just kids who were super good kids who deserved everything they got. And so seeing them go to college and do all those things, like it makes me so proud. Yeah, I'm so proud. Yeah. For Jane, Jane Anthony, yeah.